Hello my friends, Jacob's here one more time and so are all of you for another amazing, eye-opening, incredible broadcast. If you're watching right now and you press that play button, I say thank you very much and I'm glad that the asteroid that was passing within 2,000 miles from the planet Earth didn't blow you up. And if it did, that would be very uh, inconvenient for this video because I'm taping it before the asteroid actually kind of approaches some spooky stuff going on in space. Not as spooky as some of the things that are going on with statues. <laughs> yeah, you know, statues. They like to uh, display them or tear them down because, you know, sometimes we're, we're like, hey, we'll just get rid of hundreds of years of, you know, history and everything else because that's just the way things are. History, my friends, is written by the victors not by the losers. So don't get upset if your statues get torn down. It just means you've lost. So deal with it. No, but they got a new statue up on the, uh, the old Supreme Court building, up on the old courthouse of the Appellate Court Division of New York State Supreme Court. It's got like a long title. It's called the Now Statue. It's this one over here. Yeah, it looks a little bit like Medusa. That's what people say. It's a little spooky. I put something out on Twitter about it with the uh, quote from Isaiah. That thing over there, that's right. Just a f very strange, it's a very strange statue that is, you know, next to Moses. And of course, there were other Zoroaster and Confucius. And they have a lot of these statues. This is the first alien or the first uh, demon or whatever. Or like, you know, octopus hybrid. I don't know. The Kraken, Fox News, um, their title was Satanic Golden Medusa, uh, a statue that is not pro-life because it would be a statue that is dedicated in, you know, our, our, uh, our BG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's. It's kind of like in her, in her uh, realm. It doesn't look like her, I know, but supposedly the, uh, has her like signature. I guess that just makes you look like you're a judge. Of course, you know, Ruth, who passed away, she was, uh, you know, very much for uh, pro-choice and really stood for, I mean, she stood for whatever. She stood for the ability to, you know, if you know, you're know you pregnant, you not have a child anymore. So that statue is honoring that, which is ironic because it's just a weird thing to put on top of a court, right? It's like, let's just honor the fact that we're doing such a thing, just so you know. When I was born, it was a possibility. I could have been that guy. My uh, my my mother was 18 when she was uh, pregnant with me. She was 19 when she had me. My father, pff, uh, who, who the heck knows where he was. She could have easily done it. It was legal then. I'm glad that I'm here. You know, I'm just saying it. I mean, I don't think it's right to do these things, but I guess, you know, the people that are in charge think, hey, you know what we should do? We should put like a... Uh, uh, Medusa looking Kraken on top of the court building to show the world, you know, this is what we stand for. <laughs> it's an eight foot store. There you go. Eight, right? The number eight again, eight foot tall golden statue by Pakistani American artist Shazaya Sikandra. Sikander. Sikander. I don't know how to pronounce these names. Well, it now stands on the uh, state of the route, the uh, courthouse in New York's Flatiron District, next to Confucius and Zoroaster. It's called the Now Statue. Now. It just feels like an alien invasion, and it feels like we're just welcoming the aliens. You know? I put this on Twitter, and a lot of people were like, what in the world is that? And one of them was like, what in tarnation? Like that magic trick? That's editing, baby. I, I, it reminded me of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 21, which says, see how the faithful city has become a prostitute. She once was full of justice, righteousness used to dwell in her, but now murderers! <laughs> murderers! I mean, isn't that, isn't that interesting? Because the place of justice and then there's, you know, the, uh, the prostitute, another word for whore, another word for someone who is not righteous and holy, but is like married to just, I'll do whatever I want. I'll do whatever I want. I don't have to have any kind of moral compass. 
But Isaiah starts off talking about how just, you know, just corrupt things have gotten in the world, which makes way for a judgment that's upon the land. But statues, I, you know, statues are like, statues, it's like, uh, it's been all the rage lately. Remember the statue of the uh, Martin Luther King tribute that was in Boston? People were like, you know, what is this? And they were sharing pictures. And I tried, I tried to see like the, uh, I tried to see it in a good light. It just did look kind of gross. You know, it did look kind of gross. Here you're honoring Martin Luther King, which I would consider in my lifetime, probably, you know, probably he would be like the one hero, the one guy that seemed to just stand out to be somebody who really cared, who really seemed to to, to walk in the steps of Christ. And he, he made a true difference in the world. And so, of course, the statue was a little weird. It was based on the picture of him hugging, you know, the love of his life. I guess, but a lot of people are saying no. His family's saying no. Seneca Scott is, um, I, I believe his, it would be Martin Luther King's, like, I don't know, like, cousin, a couple of times removed or something, but was very upset. And uh, Coretta Scott King with, with the uh, statue, they were very upset. Tucker, Tucker had him on, and, um, you know, he had something, he thought that it looked kind of like, you know, kind of like gross. And Tucker called it, he, well, he, he used a word that I don't, I've never heard of this word, this word. And a quote, masturbatory metal homage. I, th I think the word is masturbatory, kind of like the statue had to do with, you know, master, you know, gross stuff, right? But Tucker, he's such a smart guy. He said it in such a weird way. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like a, a Mandela effect. I mean, is that the way you're supposed to say Masturbatory. it? Masturbatory. I don't know. I don't know. You got to tell me. Just sounds weird to me. Also sounds like a pretty horrible statue. If that's what the family feels, I mean, I don't know. Maybe the, uh, maybe the artist, uh, you know, jumped the shark on that one. Which, by the way, I just found out because of your comments, a lot of people are telling me Fonzie didn't jump the shark on a motorcycle, he jumped it on water skis. <laughs> I reached out to Moneybags. He's like, uh, him and I were, you know, we were like the Mandela Effect people in the, uh, the early days, and he's still very much involved. You should check out his channel if you're interested in Mandela Effects. We're even talking about doing some kind of a, a Bible Mandela Effect show, because I gotta tell you something. Things are weird, right? And it's going to be an interesting show. Maybe we'll uh, we'll do it soon. But I reached out to him and I said, what do you remember? And at first he wrote the motorcycle, but then he said, oh, wait, hang on. Water skis, right? And I said, yeah, water skis. So Fonzie jumped a shark on water skis. And I, that's sort of familiar to me. I don't know. I think it could just be confabulation or it could be a Mandela effect. You got to tell me in the comment section. But either way, the statue jumped the shark. A lot of stuff is weird to me today. A lot of stuff. Speaking of, of weird, yeah, I'm, a, I'm on Strong Island. That's where I'm from. I, I live in Long Island. And uh, you know George Santos? You know the guy who said, you know, I told everybody that, you know, he supposedly had family members in the Holocaust, which wasn't true. And then he said he was like Jewish. He had Jewish roots. But then he, like in an interview said, no, I'm, I meant like I'm Jewish. Like, like, I'm kind of like Jew-ish, but I'm not really Jewish. He lied and lied and lied. And um, supposedly at some point he said he donated $700,000 to his own campaign. But now people are asking questions. They're like, where did you get $500,000? Because there was no ledger. We don't even know who gave him that money. Could it, you think maybe, could it be another, another country? Could be giving him money and like sneaking him in there? Maybe they got a little information, a little dirt on him. I gotta tell you something, Santos dirt's been coming up. It's like this should be discussed. He was just put on a couple of um he's put on a couple of committees, you know, and people are like, this guy, how can he be trusted with national security? Because of course, you know, so many pe people that are involved in Congress are so trustworthy. <laughs> they're all they're all not really that trustworthy, right? I mean, most of them are kind of liars and Thieves, they go in, making a certain amount of money, they come out having millions and millions and millions of dollars, lifetime politicians, these people. It's very strange. But you know what? It's making the news. The fact that he was like a, um, it was like in drag queen competition. That's like, that's what's making the news. Uh, this magazine right over here. It, uh, drag artist says that George Santos left Brazil in 2005 and returned in 2008 with money to compete and lose 
in Miss Gay Rio. The embattled George Santos once wanted to be Miss Gay Rio de Janeiro, a drag artist told Insider. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. I did see footage of him getting out of the car looking like a lady. But, you know, it's like, that doesn't trouble me that much. Okay, it troubles me. It does trouble me a little bit because he wanted to win the competition. But, I mean, whatever. I shouldn't be stomping on people's dreams. What troubles me really is the fact that he has all this money and he lies. And it's kind of like, why is he still making decisions for the country? You got to tell me in the comment section. You know, I don't want to say anything because you know what? One day you'll stumble upon a video that I did. I did a, I did a right, like right, I was a uh, freshman in college, a, a summer youth festival. And I played Hysterium in a musical called Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. And Hysterium, at one point, they have to uh, trick people and he dresses up as a courtesan. So I, there's, there's footage of me in a dress with a, with a wig. I mean, I didn't want to dress that way, but I love the fact that it made everybody laugh. And the, the stuff with George, it made me laugh a little bit. It just made me laugh because it, like, it's 2023, right? Should this be an issue with people? Interesting. And we vote him in, supposedly. I don't know. Things are strange. People are scrutinizing people over things. You know, Liz, uh, Lisa Gordon sent me on Twitter. This is funny. She sent me, she sent me this. Right there, you see that? Send me a, that's the new logo, I guess, for uh, the, the, uh, the uh, you know, that, that group. That group, it's the new logo. Guess what they're doing? They're making the hard hands. I just did the whole show. If you haven't seen the show, watch the show, my last show. And I talk about the hard hands. Talk about the odd fellows. Oh, the day we're in. The day we're in. We're in a day where you got people that Russell Brands, you know, likes a lot, kisses. And has had on a show a bunch of times. This guy, he's also very connected to the World Economic Forum. People say that he's Klaus Schwab's boy, Yuval Harari. I like saying Harari because it rhymes with Ferrari. But Yuval, you know, he just, there's a video going around where he's telling everybody, humans are hackable. And now we can, we can, you know, we can, we can evolve human beings to be the way we want them to be. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. And um, no longer from the clouds above, but from the clouds of Google. Reach the point when we can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings and other organisms. <laughs> he did this whole thing. I don't know, that probably was a terrible impression of the guy. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds. But our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud. He sounds like he wants to be God. He sounds like no longer evolution will be a thing. We will tell you and we will turn you into crazy looking woman on top of building. They may be doing that, the Kraken. I don't know. A lot of people up in arms about that, you know? He, evolution is man-made. Humans are hackable because of data. That gets people scared, it gets me scared. Anything, I get, I get stressed out. I love being on Twitter, I do. I don't know, I just like the whole, the vibe of it. Lately, it's been a little strange and a little stressful for me because I lost my blue check mark. I didn't lose it. You know, I pay the $8 and then uh, Elon, he, they raised the price to 11. I like 11, 11. It's kind of the thing, Revelation 11, 11. I like 11. I got no problem with it. I got a whole video about 11, 11. You'll see 11, 11 is on the clock right there. Got no problem paying $11. I like the platform. It's, it's, uh, it's helpful. You know, a lot of you, you share things with me so I can share things that you share with me on the show. But I wanted to change my profile picture. And it's like, and I felt like I was being bullied for a long time not to change my profile picture because it kept saying, if you change your profile picture, you're going to lose your blue check mark until it's approved. You would think maybe a couple of days. So I was like, ah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that because I really want to make sure that I'm reaching enough people and everything else. And I don't want to, I don't want to like leave anything to chance. You know, it's like, the blue check marks become like crack cocaine to a lot of people. <laughs> I think that was the whole point of the thing. But for me, it's like, I don't know, I'm paying for it, so I kind of want it. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, I don't mind not having it. 
if I'm not paying for it, but if I'm paying for it and I change my profile picture, it's like, you're so super smart, Elon. You got people going to Mars, right? You got, you got, you got the dragon rockets going up nonstop. You got satellites covering the earth. You know, you got flamethrowers, you can be boring tunnels. You can, I can't change a profile picture without losing my blue check mark. Sounds a little silly. You know what else sounds silly is the fact that Elon's in court. He's in court over a tweet about Tesla. I mean, it's like 2023 just continues to get weirder. Tesla's former chief financial officer actually backed up the claims that Elon, during testimony on Wednesday in federal shareholder clash action suit pending against Musk and uh, the Tesla directors, directors, which, by the way, the tweet was like, <laughs> it was so silly. He said on August 7, 2018, and for those people that went to college and that, they, you know, they, they smoked a little bit of the Mary Jane, they'll find this funny. Am I am considering, he wrote, taking Tesla private at 420. That's like the international time for he's smoking the dubs. And then he wrote funding secured. So he's in court because of that. That's the thing. It, was he joking? Was it a joke? Was it like, was he having a little 420 time and he had a little bit of fun on Twitter and now he's got, he has to go to court? Really? He walked out of court, by the way. And uh, he was so, he was so generous to the reporters. The reporters were there and he's like, hey, what'd you think? And the reporter's like, well, we don't know what the hell you said. We just want to get a bite. Isn't that the way things are today? <laughs> People don't care. Yeah, I'm curious, what do you guys think? Uh, we weren't listening. Uh, yeah, so he's in court for that. I put up a poll on Twitter because I, I, once again, I woke up this morning, there's no blue check mark, and I'm like, what am I doing? And then I'm thinking, I'm like, do I really need social media? Because, you know, I think to myself, like, I need Twitter. I need Facebook. I need Telegram. I know Facebook not so much, but I, I had hope for Twitter. I had hoped for Twitter because I was hoping that I would be able to reach more people. But he's not promising reach. He's he's saying, look, you know, we're we're not going to promise you freedom of reach. We'll give you freedom of speech. We just may not let everybody see it. Dave Rubin was just on Fox and he was just talking about this. How you know what could get you to be a little bit hindered in your growth? There's some stuff going around. People are upset. Some people have been booted off Twitter. There's a lot of craziness going on. So I put up a poll. I put up a poll because I was thinking, wouldn't that be a great lesson to show everybody the, you know, how like social media is really kind of infecting us? Wouldn't make big business sense on his end. But I thought to myself, why not put it out there? Let's see. And then I did. And then I thought about it. What, you know, one of my friends on Twitter, you know, he's, you know, made a little joke about it. And I'm going, you know, what? I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You know, maybe I just got to wait 30 days or something to get my blue check mark back. I think what I'm going to do, just so you know, is I think I'm going to stop paying. I think that I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. Unless, of course, by the time this airs, my blue check mark comes back. So I, instead of meeting me on Twitter, do me a favor, go to my website, will you? It's right there, jacobisrael.com. You could scroll down to email subscription. We could stay in touch. And when I do a video, I don't have to worry about releasing stuff on Twitter or Facebook or anywhere else because that's my website and, uh, and it's free, by the way, and you'll enjoy it. And man, it would mean a lot if you did it. But if I'm being honest, you know, I'm being a little petty. It's like, what should, what should I worry about all this stuff for? You know what I got in the mail? I got in the mail this morning. I got a selective service thing for Tone, Anthony. He's, he's my son. He's really my stepson. But, you know, Danielle and I, we both have custody of our children. We're a blended family. I've raised the tone since he was like four years old, right? Now he's, he's, he's 21 years old. He's like all honors in like one of the, like a really high end university. All my kids are just the best. I got selective service. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, why, why are we getting stuff for the draft sent to the house? And it said like, keep it on hand. And I think, oh, well, why wouldn't we be getting stuff like this sent out? I start thinking to myself, because these people, they're doing everything they can to, it seems like they're doing a lot to start, you know, the big one, the, the, the WW3, which is like, you know, if you think of it as 333, all of these secret society people, <laughs> maybe not. But Biden, he just was telling everybody he's sending 31 Abrams tanks to Ukraine. Against the brutal, the truly brutal aggression of Russia. I haven't seen the likes of this in a long time. 
The United States and Europe are fully united. People, he's going to send the tanks, 31 tanks he's going to send over there. You know, we got to get behind them. And not just that, on top of everything else, you got what's like Germany. Germany basically came out, seems like they were declaring war on Russia. We had to make a choice between injustice and justice, freedom and oppression, between standing on the side of the aggressor and standing on the side of the victims. This stuff is just concerning to me. It's concerning to me. You know, it's weird because Russian TV is saying things like, this is a holy war. I said that like 11 months ago. I did a, uh, uh, or 10 months ago, I did a video and on the thumbnail, you see it's like a holy war. So like, I, I like made Putin like Jesus because this is the way they believe. They believe it. They believe they're fighting Satan and his minions. Or that's what they say, at least. They literally burned an effigy of the Tower of Babel before this whole thing started. There's a spiritual war going on, people. I'm not sure if you're aware, but because of it, we see all sorts of freaky things going up and you start to think to yourself, what side are we on? Are we on the winning side? I don't know. I don't know. But you know, it's a possibility that the aliens could come down and uh, write the ship. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Valen. Happy birthday to you. You want to talk about like we, we want to honor the family? I don't know if you, you saw Biden. He, he, it was like he was trying to wish a happy birthday to one of Martin Luther King's relatives, but he didn't even know her name. You know, he was acting like he knew her really well, and he's like, oh, yeah, it's her birthday today, so let's everybody sing, and he didn't know her name, and so he just, he likes a happy birthday to Alzella. Happy birthday, dear Valley. He just did that. He did that, and uh, that made his rounds, this guy. He's like the king of the gaff. Somebody caught a UFO on tape and it was, I mean, look at that. That's something else. When you have a UFO on tape, that's it. It's a done deal. All these UFO sightings, all of this stuff. Hopefully the, uh, the asteroid, because as I'm taping this, the asteroid hasn't, hasn't really gone by yet. It's happening today. I'm going to probably get this video out. I don't know. Whenever I get it out. Hopefully nothing happens with it, but I'm concerned. I'm concerned about all the stuff out there. It doesn't help that I had a terrible weird dream about like stuff like that. And then that video that I did following went viral. And today I am where I am because of that weird dream. Doesn't help. But what does help is the fact that I know God is in charge of everything and all things. And so I come on here just to tell you, look, it's silly. All of this stuff is silly, but know that God's in charge because he's revealing everything. Corruption's being revealed. Things that are terrible are being held to account. Settle down. I gotta settle down myself. We gotta think better. Think better thoughts. If we think better, the world will get better, I promise you. Have faith, my friends, and have the best day ever. Enjoy my trailer for my novel. I'm gonna play it. I do it a lot lately because it's easy for me. And also I hope that you get the novel, which is available on, um, I don't know where it is. I have it somewhere. It's available on amazon.com. It's, it's an awesome novel. And you know what's funny? I got in touch with my old agent because I need help. The truth is I need help. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm 51 years old. You know, for the last 10 years I was selling mattresses. <laughs> I, I am talented and all that, so I'm just not business savvy. I don't know how to build things. I don't know how to, you know, to make, to turn this into a huge profit. I don't know what I'm doing. But I'll tell you one thing. I know my novel is amazing, and I know that there is a purpose for it. If you haven't read a book and you want to, this is the book. I'm telling you, you'll get done with it in a couple of days. It's like watching the best Netflix series you've ever imagined. It's that good of a book. And if you know a celebrity or you know somebody that you can get the book to, will you email me and tell me and I'll shout you out and I'll thank you? Because I, I, I just, I need to do something. I need to do something to reach more people. I just feel like the world's headed towards just 
disaster. <laughs> and I don't think anybody really is ready for it. I certainly am not. I certainly am not. And just storing up a bunch of food and all this stuff is great, but who knows who's gonna come a knocking looking for that stuff. We gotta put our faith in God. We gotta put our faith in more, and we gotta trust our God-given instinct. If, you know, you got to listen to that inner voice and you got to do the right thing. You got to be kind, you got to be compassionate, you got to be patient, and you got to be forgiven. So forgive me if I've been a loud mouth today. Have the best day ever. I love you all. I'll talk to you soon. Share the channel around and uh, enjoy my video. Bye-bye. September 10th, Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the East to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling.